Hey guys, it's Maggie here to talk to you today about a game called Lagoon. Lagoon is um, recommended two to three players, but has some four player rules on it. Uh, it's a brand new game. It's still on Kickstarter right now. It is from Three Hairs Games. I was lucky enough to talk with David Chop, who allowed me a prototype copy, which I have now spread the Lagoon disease all around Seattle. Um, it is a wonderful game, as I typically don't do a lot of negative reviews. I may, I may look at games that I didn't love, but I certainly wouldn't want to put my name onto something that wasn't fabulous when it's not even out on the market yet. So if you have a chance, go to the Lagoon Kickstarter, take a look at what David has to say. The game is up to its eyeballs and extras right now. Lots of extra druid tokens, more tiles, thicker tiles, wood screen printed tokens. So if you add your money to the pool, there's an amazing something that's happening right now. Um, that being said, we're going to jump into the gameplay and I will be back with my impressions of it. All right, thank you. Here we are. I have set up a board with a couple moves in. Normally you start with just the main three pieces, one of each energy. One of those must be a haven, so that's that dark green shading here. It also has a little symbol on the right. So this is part of the way through a three player game. Players have their druidic totems here on the board. Some of them have moved and we've introduced a couple of new pieces. We're going to go through each of the different actions. So at the beginning of a turn, a player refreshes by flipping over up to three of their druids. If they don't have three, they refresh whatever ones they do have, and if they have more than three, they have to choose which ones to refresh. And then what you do is you just take actions until you feel like passing. And that can be when you run out of refresh druids to use. It can also be before that if you want to have a more explosive turn the next time. So the different things you can do, there's a few of them. There's move, summon, explore. Uh, there is invoking actions on the tiles and unraveling sites. Uh, the basic goal of the game is to have introduced the most pieces of the dominant energy at the end of the game, which means that right now these pine cone pieces, the little yellow ones, are the energy that you would want to have brought into the game. Each of the pieces from that energy are going to be worth one point. And also, unraveling tiles of the other two types at the end of the game are going to be worth two points each. So if a druid would like to move, let's say it's the bunny's turn, they take their piece, they move it one space anywhere surrounding them, and they exhaust it when it gets there, so it flips over. Now if this bunny had moved over here, that will help us to invoke other powers. This, this site, having been a site that activated upon explore, is actually kind of worthless to be on unless you're planning on unraveling it. After that, a druid may summon more druids. So it flips over, exhausted, and you take a piece and you add it to a board on its exhausted side. But it doesn't go to wherever the druid is, it goes to any haven. So you choose a haven on the board and add the druid to it. Um, the most, one of the most important pieces to this game is exploring new sites. And so you take the big draw bag, players exhaust a druid, draw one from the bag and they are double sided each of this the energies have 16 different sites so they're all equal in the bag so you get to decide which site to introduce into the world this one is a win exploring ability and it involves exhausting druids and I don't have any unexhausted druids so I may consider using the other side as long as I don't mind that this energy is introduced to the world. So the Gaia's Atlas will go anywhere adjacent to the Druid that summoned it. I immediately get one token of that energy and put it in my pool. And now I also can move the Druid that evoked that Explorer into that space. The reasons you do this is because a lot of the tiles have activated abilities that Druids the one on the tile or the ones for that team because all your druids are linked 
any refreshed druid could take an action on a tile as long as you have presence there. So that's the end of the bunny's turn. We're going to move on and take a mushroom turn. So here are my mushrooms. So the next kind of action you can take is an invoke action. So Solitude's Nest says move one of your refreshed or exhausted druids one hex. So in order to use that, you exhaust your druid and you can take one of your druids. It doesn't have to be on the same space. It could be on the other space. Take them and you move them one hex. So a lot of these chaining together of abilities are going to be really important in the game because now I've actually made it where I can move any unlock site to any space. Unlock sites are places that aren't encumbered by being surrounded by tiles. It's kind of like Hive in that way. So like this unlock space, if I wanted to, I could move that unlock site to any space on the board. That's a huge ability, huge outcomes. There's a lot of combo set up there. And the last thing I'll talk about um, I'm not real well positioned for it, so let's affect the board just a smidge. Okay, so I played around with the board just a little bit. So to show you an unravel action, you're going to look at where your druids are set up. So let's take a look at the bunnies. We have two of them on these outside pieces here, the yellow energy. And in order to unravel a site, you're going to need three energy of one type and if you have multiple druids on one site it still only draws one energy from that site no matter how many druids you have on it so if you have three blue and you have an, a refreshed druid on the yellow side so now we've primed him to be able to unravel this site a druid exhausts itself, it counts how many sites of the opposite type of energy it has, and if that number is three, this site will be taken from the world. The druid that unravels it is exiled back to your pool, and any piece that was on it before gets exhausted and placed onto a haven. Now, let's say that the rabbits were close, they had two spaces of that matching energy, but that the third one. Then the last thing you can do, you can, you can discard seeds of an energy to enhance the effect. So if I only had two, I still wanted to be unravel this, I just need to discard one seed of that type. These seeds are worth points if they're the dominant energy at the end of the game, but otherwise, they're really good for throwing toward unraveling things later. These are all the actions you can possibly take. You go until the end of the turn in which someone has pulled the last tile out of the bag. So you have quite a ways to go. The game lasts about 40 minutes or so. Some really fun, deep thought and some cool political aspects. Now let's go over what I thought. Hey guys, I'm super glad you got to see what the game looks like. It has a very political feel and it also changes a lot turn over turn. So there is no video out there that's going to really show you what the game feels like. But you can certainly make your way over to the Kickstarter page, give them your hard-earned money, or if this is many months in the future, you should go down to your local shop and pick up a copy. Um, they have all the extras in the world at this point. They have big old thick tiles. They've got wooden and screen printed pieces. They have a lot of extra druid totems. So there's going to be moons and owls and dragon flies. They didn't go for my mole. I would have liked to have a mole. But as my coworker said, they have a bunny, which I guess is close enough. <laughs> um... It is a wonderful thing with a kind of sad theme. I, I'm not a theme girl. I don't, it doesn't need to be there for me to enjoy a game. But now that I've read about it, it's about the splitting of this ancient world and this perfectly balanced energy. And as humans, we've come in and disrupted that. And now we're in this vie for power, of course. So it's this big old power grab game. And I, I think of druids and I think of combining with nature, but apparently we are bending it to our will. 
So, um, as far as two versus three players go, two players is very confrontational and there's a lot of back and forth, sometimes with decisive wins. And in a three player game, there is room for a sneaky win as well as just domination from the beginning and wiping out anyone that comes near you. <laughs> um, fantastic game. Go try it. Come play it. Uh, visit Three Harris Games website and come visit me on Twitter. It's at Maggie Bot. Subscribe to me here on YouTube and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.